What's going on guys? My name is Tyson. I'm a fourth year PhD student in chemistry at Yale University. But really and truly, my real title, how they know me in the streets, is as the first black Pokemon professor. You feel me? Y'all should already know that by now. Put some respect on my name. Jeez. But listen, Sword and Shield have been out for a few weeks now, and I spent roughly 100 hours or so of my life doing this. What does this mean and what is the meaning of life? I have no idea. But what I do know, two things. One, my man Big Umbaku right here is ready to box y'all quite frankly. So, if anybody out there wants to make the mistake of challenging my mans, feel free to hit my DM on Instagram and we can arrange a beat down. Simple. But I also have a bunch of like 5 and 6 IV mons, hidden ability mons, shinies and all that. And so if you're like more of a lover and less of a fighter, then we can just like trade and stuff. That's cool too. And two, more importantly, the last Pokedex video did pretty well. So as promised, we're back with the Gen 2 video for you guys today. You'll notice that if you showed your boy some of that good lovey dovey down in the comments in the last video, that I went ahead and reciprocated that for you. Yes. Your Pokemon requests have been specifically met. So what does that mean? That means that if you're feeling these Pokedex joints and you want to see some of your favorite mons featured in the next few videos, what I need you to do is go ahead and let your boy know down in the comment section. Hey yo, I'm a Pokemon professor. I ain't Professor X, my G. I ain't out here reading minds. If you want a particular Pokemon, you gotta let me know. But anyway, that's enough talking, man. Let's get straight to the busyness. If you've been here before, then you already know what it is. Timestamps are pinned in the comments below. Alright, now let's get to work. Its breath has a fantastic ability to revive dead plants and flowers. Oh, alright, so he like a Jesus plant? That's what's up. Alright, cool. So we get to start off by talking about death. So let me tell you guys something. Life is relatively unstable. This is why we need to do so many things in order to preserve it. Right, so thermodynamically, nature is always trying to like disintegrate and decompose your body. This is one of the primary reasons we need to fuel ourselves. You can almost think about it as needing to have the energy to push back against death. Take a look at this picture. In this representation, the man is like your body and the boulder is like death. If we don't give this man enough energy to keep pushing this big old rock, he ain't gonna make it. And if this ball were unfortunately to make it to the bottom, i.e. this individual dies, it is immensely difficult to push it back up. You'd have to be going against thermodynamics. This is why we don't really see people who are like, super dead just getting up and coming back to life. But back to Meganium. What I'm trying to say is that when a process is spontaneous, it's very difficult to reverse. But you can get back what you want via a different mechanism. So if A goes to B spontaneously, going from B back to A is very difficult. Forget about it. And so what you can do is take B and react it with another compound, the very unstable C, in order to get back more of A as well as a very stable byproduct, D confusing I know but it's possible and hypothetically this is what meganium is doing to these plants. Man, I ain't really feeling it so. Hey my man got that fuego. Everybody else out here trying to get ice on their neck my man got the flame on his neck. What a trendsetter bro. Amazing. It has a secret devastating move it rubs its blazing fur together to cause huge explosions. So if you saw the Gen 1 video, then you'll probably remember that we talked about Charizard and why his flaming tail is not very feasible in real life. I'd say that with this Gen 2 design that they traded a little bit of coolness for the realism here. So like a lot of people complained about the 3DS model of Typhlosion. They say you look like a scrub. But to be honest, this design makes it far more realistic. Again, constantly fueling a fire is not very reasonable from an energetic standpoint. And so having Typhlosion spend most of his life naked like this makes sense. Because then in a high stakes situation, Typhlosion has the option of igniting the flames around his neck in order to scare off a predator or maybe another Pokemon that's trying to steal his prey. Something along these lines. So using these neck flames as like an occasional strategy that costs a lot of energy but leads to a fantastic outcome is something that I can totally see happening. Yeah, I like this one a lot. Lantern. Lantern is nicknamed the Deep Sea Star for its illuminated antenna. This Pokemon produces light by causing a chemical reaction between bacteria and its bodily fluids inside the antenna. Nah, I wouldn't really use the terminology reaction between the bacteria and the bodily fluids. Bacteria are organisms, more like sacks of chemicals, not quite chemicals themselves, and so this statement doesn't read very well for a chemist. But fair enough, because in the previous Pokedex video, user Justin Blaylock mentioned how cool it would be to look at the evolution of Pokedex entries throughout the various games, and I think that this is a great opportunity to do so. It seems Game Freak learned their mistake because a much more recent Ultra Sun Pokedex entry reads like this. When the bacteria living inside its antenna absorb Lantern's bodily fluids, a strong luminescent effect is produced. Okay, so now this makes much more sense because now the reaction is occurring inside the bacteria as opposed to with the bacteria. 
This is a super common occurrence. There are enzymes known as luciferases that catalyze redox reactions that turn chemical energy into light. It's like super reasonable to believe that Lantern's floor is capable of doing exactly that. So I give this one a thumbs up. It is unskilled at storing electrical power. Any kind of shock causes it to discharge energy spontaneously. So making another reference to the previous video, we discussed it that perhaps Pikachu is able to synthesize high energy compounds like ATP that he can later hydrolyze in order to convert that chemical energy into electricity. It seems like Pichu also does this, except for he like does it like a noob. A reason for this could be that the compounds that Pichu synthesizes to store his energy are not very stable. It's very common to lock very favorable processes behind what are known as kinetic barriers. If you've ever barbecued before, you probably have experienced this with coal. The thing can burn forever, but it's extra hard to get it to actually start lighting. This is very efficient energy storage. On the other hand, there are things like various gaseous compounds that will ignite with very little input. So maybe until Pichu evolves into Pikachu, it's not able to store energy in a very stable way. The bubble-like pattern on its stomach helps it to camouflage itself when it's in the water. Come on now, these bubbles do not look like water, bro. This is terrible camouflage and I'm not willing to accept this. 7.8, too much water. Some flora converts solar energy into nutrition. It moves around actively in the daytime when it is warm. It stops moving as soon as the sun goes down for the night. Rookie mistake. In the previous video, we talked about Polyrath's inability to store energy as fat and how that would make it very difficult for him to stay alive while he's not eating. It seems that a similar inability to store energy is occurring within some flora. During the day, some flora can perform photosynthesis in order to convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and glucose that it can use for energy. However, once the sun goes down, this process obviously occurs much more slowly, if at all. And because it hasn't stored any of that glucose for later use, it has no way to access energy in the absence of the sun. Foolish, but doable. Espion. Psychic power builds up in the orb on its forehead as it bathes in the sunshine. Espeon is not good at battling at night. So it seems like Espeon has a process similar to photosynthesis that allows it to convert solar energy into some kind of weird psychic powers. Like some flora though, it has a hard time storing it long term. Not much to say here. Honestly, I just like this Pokemon, so I wanted to get it in the video. Sue me. When darkness falls, the rings on the body begin to glow, striking fear in the hearts of anyone nearby. Alright, so this one is very simple. I interpret this as being due to a process known as phosphorescence. This is the same process that's often used in order to make glow in the dark toys. So in light, phosphorescent molecules are excited, and then as they slowly relax, they emit a faint light over a reasonably long period of time. This is quite similar to another process called fluorescence, which, fun fact, is one of the focus areas of my research, but that's another story for another time. It's hard to see glow in the dark toys when the lights are on because the signal to noise is crap, but when you cut the lights out, you can see them glow. It's very possible that the same thing is happening in Umbreon, which would explain the glowing of its rings at nightfall. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Okay. Being bitten by Shelter gave it intelligence comparable to that of award-winning scientists. Mm -mm, nah, he might be smarter than y'all, but he ain't smarter than Tice. Quit playing with me. Wobblefett. Wobblefett does nothing but endure attacks. It won't attack on its own, however, it won't endure an attack on its tail. When that happens, the Pokemon will try to take the foe with it using Destiny Bond. Cool. Here's another requested Pokemon. However, it's unclear what this Pokemon's primary reproductive strategy would be. He seems to put a lot of focus into defending himself from attacks, which would imply that he's somewhere at the bottom of the food chain, but it's unclear to me what this Pokemon's like purpose in life would be. Like how does he get food and how does he reproduce and spread his genetic material? Nah, I ain't feeling this one. Sorry, Jacob. By the way, if you're feeling the video, what I need you to do is go ahead and smash that like button and then make sure you hit that subby for your boy. Cool. Let's get back to it. Steelix. It is thought its body transformed as a result of iron accumulating internally from swallowing soil. So, two things here. First, iron in soil is likely cationic iron, either iron 2 or iron 3, whereas the metal iron that you're familiar with is elemental iron, neutral iron. So this Pokemon would have to take its dietary source of iron and then perform what's known as a reduction in order to generate its metal coat. The second thing is like, why? Onyx and by extension Steelix seem like predators to me. Steelix is literally 30 feet long. 
I can't really imagine anybody trying to mess with Duke. Nobody is brave enough to try to eat this guy. It seems much more likely that he's out here eating everybody else. Off the top of your head, can you think of a predator with a shell? I'm sure there's an example, okay? But I'm also pretty sure that it's gonna be uncommon. Most organisms are pretty min-maxed. So I don't really see the need for the steel coat in this case. In addition to that, converting those iron ions to metallic iron is gonna be energetically unfavorable. Under most conditions. So dope design, but nah. Caesar. Its body is like steel. Its tough, heavy pincers are more suited to smashing enemies and grabbing them. Oh, he out here boxing. Yeah, this is definitely one of the dopest Pokemon. I would also say this is a better application of the whole steel thing. As an aggressive Pokemon, this big steel claws will probably allow it to box any other Pokemon that want the hands, as well as break through shelves of smaller Pokemon. As for the metal plated body, that's probably to protect itself from other Caesar, since these Pokemon probably fight each other for mates and for food. So the stronger Caesar's claws become, is the stronger its armor would have to become as well in order to fend off opposing Caesar. Uh, I'm unsure when this video stopped being about chemistry and became an ecology thing, but whatever, my man Caesar gets a pass. It stores berries in its shell. The berries eventually ferment to become delicious juices. Makes sense to me. So fermentation is typically performed by organisms under anaerobic conditions in order to regenerate a compound known as NAD+, which is required for glycolysis, the primary method that organisms use in order to gain energy from food. This is also what leads to lactic acid buildup in your muscles during a very intense workout. A little fun fact for you. But yeah, this is all very mundane. Super reasonable. Bag cargo. Bag cargo's body is approximately 18... Yup, I don't even need to finish reading this joint. 18,000 degrees, bro? Yo, my G, like, who is writing these? Yo, Game Freak needs to hit me up when they're writing these Pokedex entries. Meme Gamer the Third. That's the user who requested this Pokemon. Hey, yo, bro, why you set me up like this? This joint is crazy. Definitely a no. The exit lays are filled with happiness. <laughs> okay. Eating even one bite will bring a smile to anyone. Already brought a smile to me. Listen. They say this kind of stuff a lot in kids games, but what they fail to realize is this is literally drugs. Like, hey, yo, my man, come here, boy. You already know, boy. I got them eggs for the streets, boy. One hand of this, go have you happy forever, boy. Yeah, boy. Like, serotonin is one of the primary neurochemicals involved in generating the happy feeling. The effect of many psychedelic drugs is due in large part to their ability to either mimic serotonin or stimulate its release. These include DMT, LSD, and Molly. So yeah, Blissey's eggs are just drugs, bro. And drugs are real. You just shouldn't do them. Stay in school, kids. Be like me. Raikou embodies the speed of lightning. The roars of this Pokemon send shockwaves shuddering through the air and shake the ground as if lightning bolts had come crashing down. That's cool, but nah, it don't work like that. People love to say that other people or things travel at the speed of light, or in this case, the speed of lightning. Same thing. It is very, very hard for the human mind to conceptualize how absurdly fast light travels. The speed of light in a vacuum is about 300 million meters per second, or about 186,000 miles per second. The circumference of the Earth is about 25,000 miles. So this means that when unperturbed, a beam of light travels across the entire planet seven and a half times in just one second. That means that if we're counting, one, two, three. If Raikou started running when we said one, by the time we said two, he would have circumnavigated the globe seven times. He's out here making Jackie Chan look really bad. In contrast, the fastest land animal to my knowledge, the cheetah, can reach a top speed of about 70 miles per hour. It could typically only sustain the speed for a few seconds, but assuming that it could continue at this speed indefinitely, it would take a cheetah about 360 hours or roughly 15 days in order to circumnavigate the globe once. That's running non-stop for over two weeks. Usain Bolt's record 100 meter dash time is 9.58 seconds. In the time it took him to complete that dash, Raikou could have circumnavigated the globe about 70 times. Exactly, too fast. That's fake news, bro. His body can't be harmed by any sort of attack. Yeah, all right. So it's very eager to make challenges against enemies. I hate when they make these ridiculous entries. My man obviously takes them. This is not even a chemistry thing. This is a Pokemon thing. Little kids probably read this, take all their time leveling Lavatar, then Pupitar, to level 55 to get their Tyranitar, think they have an indestructible Pokemon, and then it just gets oko by Focus Blast and they end up snapping their game in half. JK, Titar's obviously got some bulk, especially in the sand with the Spadef boost, but golly. Not this kind of boat. This is smooth hyperbole. So yeah, it's gonna be a no for me, dog. 
All right, uh, that's it. Unfortunately, the box legendaries don't have a lot of good science in their Pokedex entries. To be honest, they're kind of lame. And so I just capped it at T-Tar for today. You'll be all right. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Did anyone actually watch the video straight through to this point? Cause I ain't gonna lie, this video is hella long. So if you did, I appreciate you. Also, you see now that I'm actually reading the comments and incorporating those Pokemon into the videos. So make sure you drop your request in the comments below for the next one. Oh yeah, make sure you like this video and drop a subby before you go. All right, very nice, very well done. See you guys in the next one.